When it becomes time to use a backup of a VMware VM that you've created using Google Cloud Backup and DR, you can get to them in two different ways. Either go to App Manager Applications and find the application you're interested in, right select and go Access, or go Backup and Recover, Recover, find the application you're interested in and go Next. This will bring up the timeline view where you can see all the backup images you've got available. In this case, I've only got one. You can switch to a table view over here if you'd rather see this as a table. Choose the backup image you want to work with, and then you've got three choices, mount, clone, or restore. What's the difference? A mount lets you access the backup without waiting for the backup to be restored. In other words, no data copy is required prior to the mount job completing. What this means is that we can access this backup very, very quickly. I can either mount to an existing host, which could be a VMware VM, or in fact, a Google Compute Engine instance, or I could mount to a new virtual machine. A new virtual machine effectively means I'm taking my backup of a VM and turning it into a whole new VM. Choose the name of your VM. Choose the vCenter where you want the new VM to be created. Choose the ESX host, which you want the VM to be created on. Choose the data store where you want the VMX file and the swap file to be created. The mount mode by default is NFS. Don't use RDM unless you've got iSCSI enabled on the ESX host. If the VM consists of multiple volumes, you can select them here. Because this mount is coming out of OnVault, I have performance options. In other words, do I want to read the data from Google Cloud Storage and then cache it locally in the snapshot pool of the backup and recovery appliance? Or do I want every read to come always from Google Cloud Storage? Or do I in fact want to start caching in the background or fully cache before I start reading? The balanced option is the best choice, but storage optimized is probably the next best choice. When I hit submit, the mount job will begin. I can then monitor it by going to the system monitor. I can go here and go monitor jobs. You can see my mount job is currently running. If I log into my vSphere client, what I can see is that a new virtual machine was created and then powered on. And look, there it is. The important point here is that this VM is being presented using VMDKs out of an NFS data store that's being presented itself via the backup and recovery appliance. This is why it's a mount, because the data is located not on the vSAN data store. It hasn't been copied there. The data is actually being presented via an NFS data store through the backup and recovery appliance. At this point, I have two choices. If I want to keep this VM permanently, I could right select the VM, go migrate, choose the option to change the storage and run what we traditionally call a storage vMotion. In this case, clearly I'd want to target the vSAN data store. When this job finishes, the VM will switch from being a mounted VM to effectively being a permanent VM in my vSphere environment. If on the other hand, I don't want to keep the mounted VM, I can go App Manager Active Mounts, right select the VM and go Unmount and Delete. The job again has been submitted and I can monitor it again via Monitor Jobs. When the job completes, what I can see is the VM was powered off, reconfigured and in a moment will be deleted. And now it's gone. In addition to doing a mount, the other thing we can do is a clone, where a mount creates a virtual copy, which is presented via an NFS data store to the ESX host. A clone literally copies the data into the targeted data store. So again, I would give the VM a name, choose my vCenter, choose my server, choose my data store and hit submit. But the VM would not be available until all of the data copy has been completed. Finally, I could do a restore. In a restore, I'm not specifying anything about the VM name or its location because what I'm doing is restoring the source VM. In other words, the VM where this backup came from. Where a clone is effectively a restore to any host with any name, a restore is literally the restore of the source VM itself. If I hit submit, I will be asked to confirm data loss because we are restoring the VM to a previous point, which means its current operational state will be removed. One other thing to be aware of is that if you put backups into OnVault pools, then if that OnVault pool is accessible to a different backup and recovery appliance, then the images inside it can be imported. In this example, you can see that I'm able to import images that were created by multiple backup and recovery appliances. In this example, there is a considerable number of applications that I could import into my current targeted appliance that were created by a different appliance. What this means is that OnVault images are truly portable and can be accessed by any appliance that can connect to the Google Cloud Storage bucket that contains them.